So many of you have asked me that which software I use to make the graphics in my channel, right? So the animated graphics and how it happens, right? And if you have noticed my channel nicely, there are two, three ways that I make the graphics and I would share the strategies behind all of them. So point by point. So today I'll show you how I make the handwritten colored graphics using the iPad. So I'll show you. So I use several uh, uh, softwares and specific applications to make these things. And among them, the two favorite ones are Adobe Photoshop uh, Draw and uh, Adobe Illustrator Draw. So this one is Adobe Illustrator Draw and you can see I have a collection of many things which I make here. For example, simple vector graphics like these things are created in Adobe Illustrator. So if I want to create vector, I create it with Adobe Illustrator. But if I want to create, let's say a pixel graphics, then I use Adobe Sketch. In case of Adobe Sketch, what happens, you can do watercolor, you can do many other things. For example, I, I give you one uh, quick example. You might have seen this character many times in the immunology videos. So this is the macrophage that I use, right? So this is totally created here. And if you want a timeline sequence that how it was created, I'll show you how it was like really created in this thing. So it's totally handwritten and uh, hand drawn and painted in this suit. Yeah. So you can see it's not so difficult and you really see the detailing over here and later on you can export this thing and use it for your own animations. Yeah, you can see the macrophages, the vesicles that have the intricate cellular details, the toll-like receptors, FC receptors, everything you have created in this particular, uh, also the chemokine receptors you can see, everything you can create in this particular application and it's fantastic, like it's really good. So there are many ways you can do it. Uh, this is one way of doing it. You have to find your own uh, style. So there are many things. So for example, the dendritic cell I also show comes from the same uh, application. For example, here you see the dendritic cell, right? See here, uh, yeah. You can see the process starting from the scratch. I'll also show you how to draw it and how to use it and doing all of these things. Yep. And I'll show the difference between these two kind of like applications, how to use them. So this is kind of like a imperfect sketch, but also looks very fancy more close towards the students because when a student is taking a note, their eyes are like more primed to see something bit incom uh, incomplete, but very fascinating, right? These are very self-explanatory. So let me show you one particular uh, artwork or let me try to create something. So let's say I want to create a cell, okay? So you can draw freehand. For example, you can change the colors and draw, start drawing freehand. So depending upon your drawing skill, you can really change it. You can, there are many brushes, so you can change these brushes. So here you can use different brushes. There are watercolor br brushes. You can change the opacity and the color schemes can be changed. Okay. Yeah. So you can even change the radius of that brush. This is one way of doing the thing, okay? Like it takes a little bit of time. It's not so easy. But I, this is one of my favorite because I am an artist. So I prefer this kind of sketching paradigm. It feels good for me when I want to create these things. So you can do layer by layer, okay? And uh, yeah, you can add new sketch layers and make things layer by layer. And let, let's say you want to make the nucleus right now. So you can make a nucleus here. Make intricate details of endoplasmic reticulum. 
so all these cell biology related drawings are actually made here so yeah this is a very simple version of the cell you know you can see like how i draw i have drawn it so yeah and then you have to spend some time on it and do it so that's a good part about it like also you can make your own lectures and you can for example here is a thing i'll show you you can make your own flashcard in this application so this is a very nice uh, application for making your own notes and flashcards as well so you can see this is a g protein coupled receptor signaling and you are looking at it from a flashcard point of view what are the key events you can see you have drawn it here and this is kind of like an interactive video flashcard which is useful right yeah now i'll show you a little bit about the so all of these graphics are made here which i use in my videos many of them are generated here so i have a collection of that few of them are in the workspace for example these neutrophils basophils whatever i use many of them are here one pattern is this one okay there are many other patterns so you can also make your own notes for example here there is a notes on influenza and you can see uh, the note is how the note was created i'll show you the back process of the note creation so you can see the note being created in real time and what it really helps like if you save it in this format in future when you revisit them it would be really helpful for you to um, kind of read these or recall these things step by step when you see something you have to this whole structure of notes it's coming in your head so this is a great thing i would say so this thing i do in adobe photoshop sketch uh, for that you need to have a adobe I adobe id so let me show you the vector graphics creation which is done by adobe illustrator draw i'll show you what is adobe illustrator draw so yeah so these are like really creative softwares for artists uh, just to let you know i'll show you some images which are created using here and adobe photoshop sketch so i'll show you a very simple one for example you want to create a cell you just create a boundary like this though this boundary is not so good or perfect but you have created a boundary and let's say now you want to fill this boundary with some colors so this would be a vector art okay so you can see this is filled like that so if you want to create a very simple cell so you, you might fill it with a comparable color scheme yeah so this is like a very simple cell and you can add complications to it add many things to it uh, the best part about vector art is like even if you zoom it a lot it would not get pixelated so if you really zoom it a lot it really won't get pixelated yeah you can see how much we are zooming in but can you see any pixelation because this is vector art okay this is vectors vector do not get pixelated where whereas pixel art would have been pixelated so far so that is why when i use vector arts in my um, in, in my videos it really looks nice okay so many of you guys also wanted to see some of my artworks i'll show you some of the digital painting that i have done so that you can see as my channel cover or etc maybe i have it here i'll take a look at it I might have it here yeah so you can see many of these digital drawings are created here so you can see the time lapse of the process this drawing is actually created here you have seen this drawing in my merchandise as well so all of these things you really can create inside Photoshop. So Photoshop is a very nice application when you want to uh, do art and really incorporate art in your processes. So you can see the process in real time right now, how I created this painting. So it takes a lot of time. So a lot of time, a lot of effort to make these kind of graphics. But at the end of the day, I think it really enhances your uh, learning ability and also it creates an engaged 
uh, learning experience. You would feel more engaged towards the lecture than a conventional copyright diagram from some books or something. So it's really unethical to take something without any uh, permission from them. But yeah, if it, it's always better like if you create your own graphics, right? So I hope you get a little bit of understanding how you can use Adobe Photoshop to create brilliant graphics like these ones. Like you, you have seen from the very simplified version to a very advanced artistic version. So this is possible. But this graphics is guys, this is kind of like a semi vector. But you can see right now, this is like a getting pixelated. So this is pixel art. So there are two type of art, digital art form. One is, uh, one is basically your uh, vector graphics. One is your pixel graphics. So this is basically your pixel graphics and both have their own possibilities. And you can see the things layer by layer, right? In the right hand side, you can see how things were created layer by layer. And that really looks nice, right? So if you want more videos like these, how I really create things, how you can create things, I'll post more. And yeah, I'm doing it using my iPad Pro. So yep, that's the thing. Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you.